to Mrs. Seville, London. Paris, November 15th, 1819. My dear sister, forgive me. I have too long neglected my brotherly duty in allaying your concern for my welfare, though I dare say this letter may serve the opposite purpose. I had to quit London in great haste, and felt poorly disposed in my effort to tell you of my plans. It was unavoidable, Margaret. When I tell you what I have learned, you will understand both my urgency and discretion. I am in Paris, having travelled by steamship across the Channel to Calais, and by coach down the long, dusty road to my present location. The precise whereabouts I would be remiss to disclose under threat of discovery. The journey itself is a tale to be told, both as an Englishman and traveller, but that embellishment must wait for happier times, if such may come. This past fortnight I have felt my heart darkening with a great foreboding, as though touched by an evil presence, and I fear it will not soon brighten against the grave news I must now impart. You may remember, Margaret, that ill-fated voyage I undertook to the Pole that ended in near mutiny, and the gentleman I rescued from the ice only to watch him perish in my cabin after unburdening his story, one M. Victor Frankenstein. Nor could you forget the terrible fiend he pursued, the wretch who brought about his ruin and then darkened his deathbed like a carrion crow. I was quite detailed in my retelling of those unnerving events, you may have doubted their veracity at the time, yet I know you remember. If only I could have obliged your misgivings with my own, if only I had not seen the creature with my own eyes. This very same being I have long thought dead, so convinced was I of his self-made misery and desire to quit this world. What folly! I should have ended him in that moment as Frankenstein implored me to do. But alas, I did not. And now my sympathy, nay, my cowardice, has unleashed this demon upon our world with a more horrifying intent, as Frankenstein feared would happen. For he is alive, Margaret, alive in Paris and scheming to make another abomination like himself. Worse, he has accomplices, men and women of learning who know not what they do, lured under false pretense of competition. I must give a proper reckoning of the events that led to this revelation, but I have no time for the account. Suffice to say I have come to learn of his plans through an esteemed natural philosopher at the Academy of Science, M. Gerwin, and I have tracked him here to verify his claims. They are true and my duty is clear. The refined character of my youth that once stayed my hand can no longer dissuade me. By the time these papers reach you, I expect the deed to be done, or my own life forfeit. I only pray my dear friend's spirit shall guide my sword into the creature's heart as he promised to do so many years ago. Until we meet again, sweet sister.